brought to you by Bethel School of Technology. Learn more at BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. Um, this is not a surprising story to me. Um, in fact, there's a, uh, a he's a, I would call him a professional acquaintance. Uh, I've interviewed him several times. We've done, we've spoken on the same stage together, a guy by the name of Bob Goff. And he's a best-selling author. He's got a great following kind of in the faith space. And Bob is a renowned lawyer. And uh, just generally a big kid, and he's a really fun guy to be around. And for years, he would say that he would have his meetings on Tom Sawyer Island at uh, Disneyland in, um, or Disney, wait a second, I always get this mixed up. Which is the one in California? Is it Disneyland? Thank you very much. Disneyland. And so he would have his meetings. He would he has a, a, a an annual pass, and he would talk about it in all these talks that he would have meetings with people on Tom Sawyer Island. And I remember the first time he said that, as most people in the audience would react to that, I was kind of delighted. And I thought it was a really fun idea. I'm a big fan of the Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn characters, and I read those things growing up because we didn't have iPads, and I'm old, and so I remember reading books when I was a kid. So I thought, well, that's a novel idea. Well, so now we've got a trend, and it's beginning to happen. So I don't think this is a new idea, but it's beginning to trend, and it's on social media. So here's the story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in and out of this thing, and I want to I wanna get the team's view on this. Uh, I got some thoughts on this, uh, but this is fascinating. And so as we watch this news story, what do you think? Could you be productive? Could you be effective working at a theme park? All right, let's roll it. Here we go. This is a news story. It's called the happiest place on earth, but now some remote workers are turning Disney World into their office. I'm a remote worker, and here's how I arrange my Disney World travel around my full-time job. The trend exploding on social media in the post-pandemic world. Everyone from freelance journalists to lawyers sharing where inside the park they can plug in and get to work. Okay, first thing I want to point out, you'll notice already we're not seeing any parents in this situation. Because I do think that Disney can be the happiest place on earth. But one of the things that blew my mind here, and I've got three kids, and I've been to Disney with all three kids, and I want to tell you something. It's really happy when you travel there. It's really happy when you walk in. And as the day begins to wear on, if a parent is being honest, they're not happy. The kids are tired. You're holding them on your neck until you can't even feel your tip of your spine anymore. You're standing in line for hours in heat that rivals the threshold of hell. I mean, let's be honest here. What I'm noticing already, Kelly, is you see people that are without kids in the clip, and they're working, and there are no kids they're dragging along. So it's kind of like, oh, it's the happiest place on earth when you don't have a kid with you. Do you see this? Do you notice this? I see it. I notice it. Are you a Disney fan? I do not identify as a Disney adult, but I love this journey for these workers that okay. so let's you're, do that. So you would classify yourself as meh? When it comes to Disney. It would be, eh, better not if I had to. Have you been? Yes, I was. How old? Seven, traumatized after Tower of Terror. Don't plan on revisiting anytime soon. So you've not been back since the age of seven? I have not. Okay, this makes us, this is great. This is new information for me, folks. Uh, Kelly, the associate producer over there, I'm, I'm having her weigh in on this. Okay, let's continue. Uh, that's one thing to point out, okay? Understand, this is all work. And a little bit of play. Watch this. While also mixing in some time to visit Cinderella's castle. I'm able to shift my hours earlier so that I can hit the parks in the afternoon after I've wrapped up my work for the day. Matt Richardson has been working remotely from Disney for two years now. What's important to my employer is that I get my work done. And that's my first priority no matter where I am in the world. He okay, this is a key point. All right, so for some of you already that this idea of people going to work remote, they're remote workers already. So let's establish this. Everybody featured in the story is already a remote worker, so their their leaders have already said this is a way of work, and we trust them. So theoretically, there are already measurables. So whether the person is working in their home or a local coffee shop or a Disney World, if we're being honest here, what does this come down to? And it comes down to, is the person getting their job done? And if the person getting their job done is based on real measurables that the leader in the company can say, look, they're getting it done— and the guy's knocking it out. Well, I mean, do I care that he's riding, you know, the uh, Splash Mountain or whatever it's called, you know, uh, or in Kelly's traumatic world, the Tower of Terror? And, you know, uh, does it really matter? We'll get back to that. 
He lives about a thousand miles away from Orlando, but realized he could still enjoy his favorite parks and create digital content while also maintaining a job at his tech company. I wanted to take a trip down to Disney as things were coming back, and uh, I, I kept working. I just I opened up my laptop, I kept the emails going, and it made me realize that I don't necessarily have to be in my home in Ohio uh, to get work done. And there's a whole system to it. On Disney blogs, you can find the best places to to whip out that laptop and peruse some spreadsheets before hopping on Space Mountain. There are a few spots. At All right, now I got to point this out here. Okay, now this if this is managed proper, this could create a marriage problem. But let's say you've got let's say you're you're a husband or wife and you got the whole fam there and you work remote. For a lot of dads here, and this could cause a lot of marital strife. So I'm going to give you this with a, with a giant asterisk. You got to play this well. If the kids are old enough and the wife can take them off. And you can get two hours of a respite from standing in line and holding the kid under the under the guise of, in truth, doing work. This could make it easier for dads. Just going to throw that out there. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of like, okay, you go over there, you take them over to Fantasyland for a while. I got to knock out a couple conference calls. And I think it's also fascinating that there are specific spots that are actually conducive to getting work done. More on that in a minute. Here we go. Let's keep going. Disney World, which are great for remote working, like the lobby of the Wilderness Lodge. And it's not just Disney World Air conditioning. Come California's on. California's Disneyland also getting in on the action. I come to the parks to do that work. I live pretty close to Disneyland, um, and I have a magic key, which is like the annual pass here. I'm able to go pretty frequently um, and you know, I'll spend time during the day uh, working uh, as I need to. Caleb Graves is... All right, now this guy's a lawyer. Okay, now there's one thing I got to bring up here. I mean, I'm a part of Ramsey Solutions. We're talking about budgets here. Uh, spending time at Disney. Now, they can't be eating there. Can they? I mean, Kelly, what does a turkey leg cost at an amusement park? Isn't it like $14 plus your drink, your little sippy cup? Before you know it, you're spending thirty to fifty dollars. You don't even know. You don't go to amusement parks. But am I right? I love a good fair, and a turkey leg at the fair is at least fourteen fifty. All right, that's at the fair. So now I'll bet you that's twenty two dollars at Disney. Here's my point: you could easily, if you were to eat two meals at Disney while you're working, Alex, uh, you're spending well over a hundred dollars. So, so here's the here's the hidden thing: it's not in the story. I mean, they kind of cover it, but but I get you get you got your annual pass. And you could write that off, I guess, as your work thing. Okay. I mean, it's kind of like being a member of East Spaces or something like that. So I get that part. But, well, no, you can't write it off unless it's 1099 income. Sorry. Got to be careful. But how much do you spend on food at Disney? We saw the clip just a minute ago, the guy with the little icy. That's eight bucks right there. Easy. It's probably more than that. All right. Here's my point. You can't take the Tupperware in. Are they sneaking food in? Are you bootlegging the carrots and celery? And you're in the Wilderness Lodge lobby, you know, eating like a like a rabbit? I don't know. I got questions. An attorney and makes the most of his daily downtime with some Disney distractions. You can uh, finish a meeting and then go uh, watch some stormtroopers. Is that that kind of what you get to do? Yeah, that, yeah, that's definitely an option. This would make well, Alex not happy. Thinks you should be able to work from you a like Star Wars, far, don't far you? Away. Dr. Yeah. Stefan Meyer with Columbia Business School supports remote work, but says workers should be careful not to take right, advantage to of their employers. You know, what is kind of accepted? Uh, what is okay? Uh, remote work? What is just giving flexibility? And what is like slippery slope into we're not just taking more days off uh, and phoning it in? On a ride. For Caleb and Matt, though, they're just hoping to add a little more magic to their work day. It's a feeling of comfort, um, a little bit of nostalgia. There's great music. It's just a really happy, fun environment to be in. Okay, this is the key point. All right, we've had a little bit of fun with this. Let me just bring all this down. Listen, if you're a leader and, and, and you're in a company where remote work is allowed, this is all coming down to measurables in the form of accountability. Is the person getting their work done and it's easily measurable? And if it's measurable that they're productive, it doesn't matter if they are in their home. They could easily get distracted watching Netflix, walking the dog, talking to the neighbor. I mean, so what's the difference between Disney and their home? So I thought it was fun that they brought this guy on. He's like, well, it's the slippery slope. Let me tell you what the slippery slope is. 
if you're already in a remote uh, work environment and you don't have measurables and you can't track productivity, there's the slippery slope. But the bottom line is, if somebody wants to go work at Disney and then ride rides for three hours after the day of work, I mean, that's just kind of the world you created. So that means if you don't like it, then you need to make sure they're back in the office. That is my judgment. If you can measure their productivity and they're doing their job, what are you going to say about them being on a ride or hanging out with Pooh Bear? You know, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, Tigger. So here's my final thought on this. I actually think it's an interesting scenario. I looked up the definition of inspiration, Alex, and this is what it says. This is the definition. The process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially do something creative. If, if this story were on what people are doing in remote work to be more creative and more inspired in their work at home, everybody would be going, oh, that's wonderful. And so if you're sitting there and the smell of a turkey leg and funnel cake and the noises of kids screaming in delight and in agony all come together in one big giant chorus of creativity, I say, go work in the briar patch. And that's what I'm sticking to. It's interesting stuff. I wouldn't mind shooting my show live down at Disney. Kelly'd hate it, but she needs therapy. Launch your tech career today at BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman.